Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tech Talks Season One, which is a new initiative powered by Fcode Labs. And before moving forward, uh, I hope every one of you are staying safe and staying healthy during these tough times. And we are very elated to see you guys joining with us uh, today at this very at this time. So, uh, just to, before moving forward uh, with the to, with today's uh, speech. Uh, I will I'll just take you through a bit about what Tech Talks is. So this is an initiative brought with the uh, objective of inspiring the young generation of tech enthusiasts uh, to uh, make them understand or to make them updated about the future technological developments that is happening that will happen in this world in terms of research and development and where the technology will uh, lead the world to and also Uh, the latest implementations of technology around the world in the industries and what they are uh, re- what they are doing to this world to make sure that this world is going through a journey in terms of technology led development so just to make sure that uh, people are updated and people and all these enthusiasts who are uh, trying to step into this industry as fresh graduates and also for the people who are learning uh, as undergraduates and also the people who has uh, who are uh, in the industry as well established in the industry as well i believe this would be very useful for everyone to get updated about what is happening around the recent developments and the future de- developments and the way in the, and to get an idea about where this industry would be led to so having said that we will be uh, moving to the first season the first episode of tech talks 101 and uh, this uh, the season 1 is named as uh, crossing technological boundaries to research and development and we will be uh, connecting you guys with a lot of uh, academic profiles from around the world uh, to discuss about their research and development the projects that they are doing and what are they expecting and where they are expecting to take these industries and particular sectors of the industries and what is the future direction of these sectors would be so uh, today with us uh, we have an interesting speaker and uh, we will be speaking a lot about his research and his his contribution to the research and development in terms of hardware security and uh, data movement in multi core structures okay so for the first episode that we have today joining with us is a very interesting profile he is currently an research intern at arm incorporation texas united states of america for those who those of you who don't uh, have a clear understanding about what arm incorporation is Uh, it's the global uh, global giant company which uh, develops uh, cpus gpus and npus and f- just to put it in basic terms the processors that you use in the apple uh, mobile phones and apple devices are architected architected by arm um, incorporation usa and uh, he works as a research intern at arm um, incorporation and uh, he is currently reading for his phd in electrical and computer engineering at university of texas and he is also a former graduate from the faculty of engineering of university of moratur and a former applications engineer at synopsis in corporation sri lanka uh, another interesting fact about him is that he is uh, he was placed the district first and island fifth in the uh, gce a level examinations held in 2012 so we have with us today mr ashen ekanayaka uh, hello mr ashen uh, it's a great pleasure hello. to have you today with us So uh, yeah. to start start off with uh, how uh, how has your life been going these days? How is it happening for you? Yeah, yeah. I just uh, actually finished my fourth semester here at UT Austin, and yeah, two weeks ago I started my internship at Arm, and it's been good. But basically, I was I I was in my apartment all day. You know, I have to cook and all, but still, uh, I guess uh, pretty much life is good. <laughs> yeah that's uh, the most of the things that's happening around these days uh, with this pandemic situation and a lot of people are restricted with their, their general day to day activities yeah. uh, speaking about your profile it, it was a very uh, impressive profile and i believe i got your introduction correct as well uh, without missing anything so yeah uh, thank you thank you for for that introduction yeah. <laughs> yes so uh, you could uh, just give us uh, more information about your academic background and where you come from and uh, how have you uh, come to the position that you are right now okay yeah cool so actually my primary education was in ratnapura ferguson high school ratnapura uh, so this is back in 2004 i moved to colombo i came to royal college and then there uh, i did uh, ordinary level and advanced level examinations and then uh, i had the chance to get into university of moratua and uh, yeah i did some projects i did some internship uh, in third year i did an internship with paracom technologies and in my final year i did a research project 
research project. So those two helped me to get into the research scene. And then uh, after graduation, I joined its Synopsis uh, Sri Lanka and I worked there for one and a half years. And then I got the admission to University of, Tex University of Texas at Austin. So yeah, 2019, I came here. And uh, since then, I've been studying for my master's and PhD. So it's been a crazy ride uh, from 2004 to 2019. Within 15 years, my life has changed from, you know, Prasnapura to UT Austin. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's very great to hear how your life has uh, transformed into where you are today. And I believe a lot of us would like to hear a lot more about what you are doing in uh, the University of Texas and what your research uh, field is. And specifically, why did you uh, choose to go in this path and why did you choose to enter to this university and also uh, pursue your studies in this particular field of research? Yeah, of course. So my, comp like my research field is broadly uh, categorized as computer architecture. So maybe you may have not heard about computer and architecture, these two words together, but maybe in civil engineering, you may have heard of it. So basically what, they, what we do is uh, we uh, design the processor inside our computers and the other chips connected to the processor and we organize how they are working together. So that's basically what we do but there are many more fields inside this computer architecture field. So I will get into details uh, later. And as for why I chose this field, uh, so it's an interesting story. Uh, so I was not like, you know, I was not the electronic engineer, engineering student where, you know, like back back when I was a kid, I play with, the, play with wires and all, you know, I wanted to be an electronic engineer or something like that. I, I came to University of Morato and, you know, I was selected to electronics and telecommunication engineering, but I was, I was trying to find something interesting to me. So in third year, I, I remember for one of my classes, we had to design a processor. So that that project gave me a really boost, you know, like I, I really liked that project. And, you know, I was like, you know, this is something I should uh, pursue uh, because I, I really liked it. And then I got an internship with this startup company called Paracom Technologies also. And uh, that helped me a lot to improve on that. And then during my final year, I, I was able to do a research project in the same uh, field. So those those three things basically yeah, you know, set, set the platform for me to uh, you know, choose this complete architecture field. So then during one and a half years of work at Synopsis, I started applying for universities. So University of Texas at Austin is uh, really famous for computer architecture. And there are really famous uh, computer architecture professors here also. So when I got the admission from UT Austin, I was like, yeah, this is it. I'm going there. So yeah, in 2019, August, I came here and I just did one semester of in-person classes and then I was inside my apartment all day. Yeah, that's the story. <laughs> uh, although it has the sad side of you being, uh, you had to be in your home and your apartment throughout uh, the period of time that you have been there. But then uh, yeah. it's, uh, I believe it's one of the uh, greater stories where people could look into and get inspiration from. So uh, yeah. Again, like you mentioned, uh, we'll be talking uh, a lot more about your research fields, about hardware security and uh, the things that you've been doing here with ARM Incorporation and also in the university. But before moving to that, uh, we'll just roll back a bit and just speak uh, a bit about uh, the life that you have had in the United States and with the University of Austin. Like how has uh, the exposure that you have got moving from Sri Lanka into a global uh, atmosphere where a lot of people from around the world, a lot of academics get together to pursue this uh, industry and to pursue the research and development of this industry. So how has it been for you? How has the life there in the university and also in the United States been for you? And I'll be, I believe that would be something interesting for the listeners that we have here today, just to get an understanding about it. Uh, yes. Yeah. So like you said, the global experience is one of the major, you know, remarkable things I, I got to experience here. So because uh, as an example, my, you know, uh, we have few, PhD students from China, Greece, you know, uh, uh, what do you call the Uganda. 
So like all around all continents of the world, you know, all around the world, you know, you got to meet these people, you know, they have their different accents and uh, it's, uh, it's really nice to have all these people. And of course, all the Americans are also there, you know, they have their fancy accent. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all really good. And, you know, uh, it's a really great experience. Talking about UT Austin, you know, uh, the, I, because I was passionate about computer architecture, you know, I knew uh, some of the concepts inside computer architecture, how the processor is designed and all, you know. And then uh, some of the professors who teach us classes for, like, for, who teach classes for us here are some of the pioneers of designing these processes, you know, like, like just to, uh, you know, just to meet these people, you know, like, when, when whenever I use my computer, I can, like, I can think of like, okay, this person designed this part of this computer or something like that. And I'm, I'm learning from him, this guy. So it was, it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy. And, you know, it's really nice experience. So that's uh, really, that's one of the biggest advantage we, we have uh, when you come to United States, you know, this many, many of these uh, universities have professors who, you know, contributed to the research community uh, and, uh, you know, advanced the technology further and further. Yeah, life in general is, uh, has been really good apart from the COVID part. Uh, yeah, and um, and another big factor I want to talk about is, you know, Austin, this city. Uh, Austin city has become a really, uh, you know, booming city right now. Uh, of course, I think you may have heard of the Silicon Valley in California, which is like the tech uh, hub and, you know, all the head offices of tech companies are there but now because of the tax situation and uh, many other reasons they are trying to move to texas and you know many of the companies google facebook arm amd uh, microsoft whatever you name it every every company has uh, you know started uh, their branches in austin and that has given us uh, the UT Austin graduates and undergrads a really good chance because they are coming to our university to recruit and they are giving uh, tech talks, they are giving seminars and, you know, that exposure, you know, like one day Google is there, one day Sam Samsung is there, you know, they are giving free food and all, you know, that I, I'm interacting with all these companies every day and it's really nice. So, yeah, that has been a really great experience for me here in UT Austin. That's an amazing environment to be in for like for any of the undergraduates or any of the graduates who are watching this as well. I believe uh, it would be an inspiration for you to uh, plan where you want to go and where you want to uh, end up in your studies. And uh, there are a lot of great destinations around and this, which is one of this. And it will open up numerous opportunities for you guys in future. And uh, so talking a bit more about the research that you research areas that you are focusing on, one is hardware security. So. Yeah. Uh, could you please explain a bit about this uh, research and what are you doing in this research and also what is the importance of doing this research and the outcomes that you expect uh, from this research and why is this important right now? Yeah, for sure. So security is a major concern right now because uh, one of the key points I, I should uh, you know point out is you know 92% of the international currency is in digital. So imagine your salary or your like your bank accounts and everything is in it. Only eight percent is like uh, you know tangible, <laughs> tangible money. So uh, if there's a security breach, it's a major issue. So that's why the, there are many research going on uh, to you know protect this uh, data uh, you know sitting in the servers and it's sitting in the memories all around the world. So when we talk about security. Uh, you know, well, the, the first thing comes into our mind is uh, virus, right? Software viruses. So, but uh, what I'm doing is not uh, that. Uh, I'm doing uh, security attacks related to hardware, actual hardware. That means the processor design. So, which is really hard to catch because software viruses, you can give an uh, operating system like, you know, OS update or something like that. And it can... Uh, come up with a solution for that but when you have a hardware level uh, attack security attack that means the, your chip is already designed and it's mounted in your laptop you know you can't do anything it's really hard so uh, coming up with solutions for that is uh, 
one of my research so moving on to more details so if you uh, uh, if you if you have uh, any uh, experience in tech, uh, programming you may have heard, you know like if if else statements uh, or for loops something like that so that means you know your programs uh, uh, direction changes after some point so that's that's what we call branching so usually what happens in a processor is you know uh, you execute instructions one by one uh, in order and when you encounter this branch you go to another place and then you start executing instructions one by one again so this is the normal procedure how the processor works and to uh, you know uh, efficiently execute this uh, people have come up with numerous uh, improvements for the cpu so the one major improvement is a uh, pipeline in this procedure so when you start one instruction you you some part you do some part of that instruction and you move forward to your next stage and the second uh, instruction comes into the pipeline and likewise you know everything goes in a pipeline so this makes it really fast and the other thing is you know usually we uh, we execute the instructions one by one but you can predict the future and you can execute multiple instructions uh, predict the future and multiple instructions again and maybe if you found out later this is not the correct path you can just start from the correct path but if it is correct that means uh, it's a really uh, good improvement and you can just uh, go ahead with the program so this is called out of order execution that means you know usually you uh, execute in order but if you have resources you do out of order so this depends on the prediction mechanism so you have to predict the future of this instruction stream that's the basic core idea behind that so all of these improvements people did it because we wanted faster laptops right when you click chrome when you click facebook or whatever we need it to appear quickly otherwise people will be you know screaming at your laptop and all that you know uh, from uh, researchers came up with this crazy new ideas because to uh, speed up the uh, process inside our processes but uh, they what they didn't know is they it end up uh, getting some uh, vulnerabilities into this actual hardware because of these uh, efficiencies so because uh, as an example I, i told you right in the, in the pipeline when when i when when we uh, when you predict the instructions and you know execute it beforehand maybe it could be wrong and then you we call it you flush the pipeline and start from the beginning uh in that scenario there's one uh, problem happens uh, because uh, as you know ram ram and memory and memory data will be coming into the cache memories that is cache memories is like uh, uh, like a temporary storage between the processor and the actual ram cards so it's a fast fast memory uh, so accessing the cache memory is faster than the ex- uh, than accessing the memory so in the scenario i explained earlier when when you execute out of order and let's say if, if you execute some uh, memory read instructions so that data may have already been in the cache now but then you later found out okay this is not my correct path i have to reset again and start again but this cache now has some traces from uh, before so i mean it's a really small <laughs> detail Of, about this uh, process but somebody some smart attacker came up with this idea to you know if that data is inside the cache uh, i know accessing caches is faster than the memory if i can like you know time the uh, you know if i can you know measure the time to read this data i may be able to read this data so that's the security attack uh, uh, what i'm talking about so in this 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 may seem like a very simple thing but people can access credit card information passwords those kind of things using this attack so i'm i'm trying to uh, you know not go into more details you know i think you may got, you may have got, gotten a, 
a small idea about what I'm talking about. So those are the kind of security attacks I'm currently working on. So my project is to come up with solutions, not only for this attack, but for future attacks like this. And, you know, give a, uh, give a programmable interface to, uh, come, uh, uh, you know, make solutions for these attacks. So that, you know, in the future, let's say when you update your Windows 10 point or, or whatever the operating system you have, there's a security update will come and it will update the actual hardware such that, you know, these new, new kinds of attacks will be also updated easily. I mean, that's the end goal. I'm nowhere near that. Uh, I'm, I'm currently working on it. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's uh, currently the main project I'm doing. Apart from that, I'm doing another project called uh, Efficient Data Movement in um, Multi-Core Systems. So I'll, I'll briefly say, so like now, uh, as you may know, you know, your, your laptops also have more than one course, right? Four cores, quad core, eight core, octa core, or whatever. But in the servers, they have gone to 128 cores, 64 cores like that. So when you have this, this many number of cores, there are problems with sharing data between cores. And if, if all the cores are trying to uh, read the same data, there's, a, there's congestion happening, you know, we call it the cache coherency problem. So because of this problem, you know, passing, uh, passing data from one core to another has become a bottleneck. So we uh, came up with an architecture to pass data from one core to another efficiently. So that's basically the idea. So there are many more details. I don't want to bore you with those details, but yeah, that's kind of because of this, you know, people went crazy with the number of cores, hundreds of cores, uh, but uh, we need to come up with uh, better mechanisms to com communicate with one core to another. That's basically the other project, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So those are very interesting stuff. And although you say like you are no way uh, near to uh, get into the final uh, goal that you want to get into with your research uh, with regard to hardware security, I believe uh, you would be able to get through it. And it's uh, with the current uh, information age and also with the amount of information daily processed around the world within these, all these devices that will serve a greater purpose to this world, right? Uh, going beyond what we see right now while talking here. So... Uh, Again, uh, when, you, when you talk about this stuff, uh, it's one thing that uh, would highlight or one thing that would pop up is like these kind of uh, things that are happening around the world these, with these technologies and the contributions that uh, people has made to these uh, technologies to bring them thus far. A lot of people has been involved and a lot of smart people, a lot of people with potential has also been involved this, with this stuff from this country as well, from Sri Lanka as well. But one of the barriers that we see is that uh, why we have not yet been able to bring these technologies, bring these research technologies and the uh, capabilities into this island and then uh, execute these uh, operations from th this research and majorly the research and development in this country because we do have the resources, uh, the human resources, these pe people with great potential and uh, we do have all the uh, intellectual uh, resources that we need. So what do you think as the barriers or the limitations that we have in moving to the extent where to go in, move in the academic uh, sector of this country to the place that it deserves to go? Yeah, so one of the major barriers I see is, you know, our undergraduate programs are really good. You know, University of Morocco, University of Peradinia, I'm sure the private universities and all, now they are doing a great job. And, and, and also the internet is serving a really well to all the people, you know, everything is uh, available online. But when it comes to this research, you know, you got to have a, a knowledgeable people in your country. So I think uh, that's one of the major barriers I see, you know. So to overcome this issue, I, I guess uh, what we can do is, you know, we should encourage many more people to go abroad and, you know, get this knowledge uh, all, from all around the world. And maybe come to come back to Sri Lanka and share this knowledge with the younger crowd. And, you know, if you, if you come back to Sri Lanka and, you know, there's more more opportunities to initiate research and all. So I, I, I see a knowledge gap. Uh, this knowledge is not uh, uh, here, not there in Sri Lanka right now because uh, 
not many people go to go abroad for phd so masters and come back and that that's also another problem so you should have come back and uh, you know uh, share this knowledge to sri lankan younger crowd students and undergrads uh, yeah i think uh, that's one of the major barriers we have and also you know from from our government side they should back the research you know research can't be done in a vacuum so you need funding so that also uh, that is also a major problem so in here in united states uh, they invest a lot like millions of dollars in research so these universities get uh, grants from uh, actually i am also funded from united states government national science foundation they are they are funding uh, for my research so uh, government in normal should be there and uh, the knowledgeable people uh, should uh, come back to sri lanka and you know share their knowledge i think that's a major uh, barrier we should overcome yeah yes that is something very true and something that should be addressed uh, within this uh, country as well and uh, speaking about uh, your researches and we will just move a bit further from that so uh, with all the uh, exposure that you have got uh, what are the other kinds of researches similar researches that is happening uh, around in the university of texas and uh, in your uh, uh, in the organizations that you have been working with in general yeah so if i can talk only talk about electrical and computer engineering that inside that also there are many more fields so i can just talk about like few of the fields i was exposed to so m- one of the main topics uh, hot topics right now is machine learning and artificial intelligence right so machine learning and artificial intelligence so computer science and computer engineering people they come up with this nice uh, architectures nice uh, coding styles and you know nice uh, neural network architecture whatever you want to call it this machine learning architectures and the problem is these are really compute exten- uh, expensive and you know and uh, you have to support uh, you have to support uh, yeah, you have to give the support from the hardware side to run this machine learning algorithms so one of the major research right now in our department electrical and computer engineering side is you know come up with uh, accelerator architectures to support the machine learning uh, so machine learning accelerators is a major uh, project and also how how do you optimize the current cpu gpu and all these uh, uh, all these current existing uh, you know compute architectures to uh, you know facilitate this machine learning algorithms that's a major field here and also image processing video processing those kind of things also have uh, major research going on and again there's computer architecture which which is my field uh, like i said you know the cpu improvements how the cpu and all the maybe new by for your wifi module bluetooth module cpu all this how they are interconnected how can you uh, you know reduce the latency inside those uh, modules those kind of research uh, what else there's a thing called uh, vlsi which is very large scale integration so that is basically how you when you design the chip so i am in that stage where i design the chip computer architecture uh, architectures uh, that design the chip then how it becomes the actual chip that process the vlsi process there are multiple steps in this process you know actually maybe not all our sri lankan students are exposed to all those steps you know when you come to a country like this you know you can get uh, uh, exposed to these kind of uh, areas and you know maybe you never know you may be interested in one of the areas in between as and you may end up finding some new technology so yeah those are the kind of research going on Uh, right now in my department uh, listening to all of that uh, i believe there's a lot of similar opportunities going around in uh, uh, your country and the universities and there's a lot of people talented people if they have the courage and guts to get through to these opportunities and pursue their uh, higher studies and the contribution that they can give to this industry there's a lot of opportunities available out there so what do you think uh, how do you think that the undergraduates or the graduates or the people uh, industry people in the industry of sri lanka should uh, equip themselves or arm themselves uh, to uh, 
go forward and get into these opportunities and uh, how they should uh, develop themselves into what they de- what they should develop themselves into in order to get into these opportunities and pursue their uh, contributions further forward yeah so that's a really good question so i think uh, obviously you know in sri lankan setting you know advanced level is like the major place where you can get into a university right so if you are lucky enough to get into a government university that's fine uh, also if you can get into a private university or whatever you need the college education and they are not only just finishing your four years of college college education you just have to maintain your grade point average we call it gpa uh, gpa uh, if you can maintain it as a first 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 class uh, uh, gpa that's better higher the better but uh, at least try to maintain it uh, un- at least uh, in the first class uh, range and uh, also try to engage in more and more projects not only getting the grades of your classes but try to engage in projects especially research projects if you can uh, you know do a research project and maybe try to publish a paper or maybe a half paper at least or abstract actually i i was able to publish an ab- abstract during my college uh, college time so uh, if you can get uh, you know do some ex- research uh, during the college period that would be really beneficial because that will uh, strengthen your resume when you apply for these universities and uh, also obviously internet is a great place i learned a lot from youtube and all these resources you know when, once once you are interested in something just uh, you know put your time and uh, sit down and try to work on it on yourself and uh, this will uh, improve uh, your abilities skills in the maybe in my case programming and other computer architecture related on this concepts understanding the concepts and all so yeah these kind of things uh, will help and also you know when you when you apply for universities uh, just do your research uh, about the, those universities and you know what kind of research they do what are they famous for and you know and uh, just uh, apply all around the world i applied for universities in australia europe usa you may end up in somewhere and uh, yeah uh, there are tons of opportunities uh, you just have to you know uh, back yourself and go for it yeah that's uh, what i have to say yeah yeah so for all the uh, young uh, tech enthusiasts out there who are like uh, stepping into the uh, industry or who has just stepped into the industry uh, who has or, or else if you are just stepping into the academic uh, or your college studies so uh, just i believe this would be an inspiration to you guys and uh, if you if you think that the limited opportunities that we have here in sri lanka is limited uh, it doesn't mean that uh, it would be the end of uh, the pot- it would be the end, the limit or the boundary that you have to expand your potential there's like uh, ashay mr ashay said there's multiple of opportunities out there waiting for you guys you just have to prepare yourself uh, prepare yourself accordingly and like he said back yourself and make sure you go to what you want to go to and where you want to go to so yeah. uh, it has been a very fruitful and a very interesting conversation that we had uh, with you today and uh, time has passed as well so uh, just to wrap things off uh, is there any uh, special message that you want to give to the uh, listeners out there we have a lot of uh, uh, we have a crowd uh, a lot of undergraduate people and graduates and uh, people from the industry here listening uh, to this uh, yeah uh, not a big message but you know this may clown like uh, this may sounds like cliche but you know still it's true you know put your heart and soul into whatever you do uh, in your studies uh, especially if you are if you are trying to uh, go for the higher studies uh, out of your country and uh, then uh, yeah and try to grab all the opportunities uh, uh, all around the world and uh, you 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 definitely have the skill set and you know you just have to you know sharpen your skill set and uh, just uh, go for the uh, you know go for the end goal that's uh, that's what i have to say and uh, i really appreciate your effort this new initiative you started to you know inspire the young generation you know students and undergrads and 
even the graduate students uh, you know i really appreciate your uh, effort and hopefully this will continue and you know we can share our experiences and you know knowledge to the younger crowd and you know inspire them to become uh, more and more you know scientists uh, engineers you know researchers world changers or whoever they want to be yeah yes that's a great message like put your heart and soul into what you want to do and make sure that you go there because at the end of the day the industries that you are in the areas that you are working in you will be the people who will be nourishing these industries and taking these industries forward and these technologies forward over the years it's the same that the previous uh, generations has done as well bringing everything that we have the technologies that we have to the current state that we have so it's you are the guys who will be taking this forward from there so like he said there are opportunities around the world try everything that you, that uh, is that is possible in your within your reach and uh, make sure that you go to where you want to go and achieve everything so mr ashin thank you very much for your time and thank you for accepting the invitation to join with us uh, with tech talks 101 powered by fcode labs and uh, we wish you all the best with your future endeavors and your research studies and uh, your phd and we believe that you could uh, you would make a great career and career within this within this industry and also go to become a great uh, game changer within the within the industry within the tech industry and in this world so uh, thank you thank you yeah. uh, so thank you very much and uh, for everyone out there so this is the end of the first episode of uh, season 1 of tech talks 101 and uh, thank you very much for staying with us and listening uh, to throughout this uh, session so if anyone wants to uh, get in further touch with uh, mr ashan ekanayaka i believe you could get in touch with him through linkedin and also through facebook and uh, also through uh, the inspiring tech talks group as well so if you have any questions that you need to direct to him you can use this any use any of these medias and uh, direct it to them and uh, direct it to him and i hope he will uh, do his best to help you through and just to inspire you more and more about what you could do in your life and what you could go where you could go uh, in terms of what you can achieve so uh, thank you very much and uh, have a great and pleasant night and uh, stay safe and stay healthy so see you soon with the next episode of tech talks 101